Hey everyone, welcome to my show. I'm Tiffany Blackman. Welcome to my so-called fabulous. Now oh, there it is. Are we happy today? Are we healthy today? But let me tell you what. I'm going to make you happy today because I'm bringing you a guest today that we've been friends for a year or so, and I met her because I meet so many people online, of course, on Instagram, but I'm bringing you Carly Marsteller with Stellar Creations. Welcome. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. It's so good to see you, and I am, I, I'm, I just don't even know how to say this. Balloon Master is what we're going to call her. Um, there's so many facets to your career, but balloons, if you've looked at, let's see, you're at Stellar Creation, okay, at Stellar Balloons on Instagram, and I want you to go there right now and take a peek. Beautiful. So tell us a little bit about your business. So um, we do just about anything you can think of with balloons. Um, we do deliveries, contactless doorstep. We do big installations for storefronts. Um, and recently we opened a party shop uh, by TCU. So we have paper cups, napkins, oh. plates, all the fun stuff to throw a party. So Absolutely. kind of a, trying to become a one-stop shop. So when we say balloons, everyone, we're not talking about the balloons that you blow up, that I blow up. And and there's a story here, but... but that you get at a, at, a, at, a, at a big box shop at all. We are talking scapes. I mean, beautifully designed balloon scapes and colors. And I, and I do want to know where you get your inspiration from because I can't even believe it. And, and if you go to my Instagram, you did Kennedy's 21st birthday during COVID, April 29th. She did this, our entire <laughs> front of our home. And it was fabulous. I just, I can't even say it just made, it just made so many people happy because in April we were shut down. I mean, it, we were shut down. You came to my home, did the outside and it's beautiful. We did the color selection. So let's back up your career because you are an attorney, top of your class at Texas A&M. So tell us what made the transition? Because I have had a career change. Many people contact me that I don't even know, Carly, and talk to me about career change and why they do it. So tell me what was the facet or the caveat that changed your mind with it, with the legal system? So I kind of have to go back, I guess. So in high school, like I was smart, but school came easily. So to me, my parents didn't have a formal education at all. So in my mind, without any guidance, you go be a doctor or a lawyer. That's what you do if you want to be successful. And right. I'm, you know, very, my parents just didn't really have any um, knowledge of other avenues that would have been better suited for me where I could still succeed. So I was like, I guess I'm going to go to law school. I'm better at writing and speaking and doing things of that nature. So law school it is. So I go to college, four years, graduate take the LSAT, go to law school. And I show up to law school and I guess, I don't know why, but I had very low self-esteem at that point because mm -hmm. I went into it thinking I'm the dumbest person here. Wow. Like, I am going to be out of here in a semester. Right. Like I'm not going to make it. Um, and I don't know why I thought that because hmm. I got a scholarship and like I, LSAT scores were pretty good, but mm -hmm. I don't know why. It was just low self-esteem at that point. So you got into A&M, girl. At the time, well, I don't want to undermine my, you know, right. school, but it was at Texas Wesleyan when I started. Okay. And then the stars aligned and it became Texas A&M. Okay. So that oh, was good. great yeah. because of the, you know, name recognition is right. huge. Um, so anyway, I'm in law school and I'm sitting there the first semester thinking, well, that was a fun semester. That's it for me, you know, because your grades you don't have anything but a final at the end of the semester and you have no idea for the most part how you did. So didn't talk about law school, didn't say a word over Christmas break, like, you know, not going to mention it. And so grades come out, did pretty well, was super, super close to Dean's list even. So it was mm -hmm. such a irrational fear that I had, but right. law school kind of does that to you, I think on purpose. But anyway, so then I gained all the self-confidence like, oh, this is for me. This is where I'm supposed to be. So I really enjoyed law school and I did well. And, um, I had internships two and a half or yeah, two and a half years through law school and really enjoyed all of the internships. So I kept thinking, this is what I'm supposed to do. Like I made the right decision. Um, looking back, I see now that it was more, I just needed something to boost my self-esteem. It wasn't that wow. law school was it because if, you know, my parents knew, or if anyone knew me, it, that wasn't a fit. Like I like to be 
out and about doing things, moving, creating. Like mm-hmm. I've always loved crafting and making things and sewing and it it just wasn't necessarily the right fit. So anyway, graduate, pass the bar exam, I get a job and oh my gosh. I was just kind of like, Ugh, this is just not what I thought I signed up well, for. Mm-hmm. Um, so worked for about four years as an attorney got married last summer and um, or spring, but I had balloons at my wedding. I was looking for a way to kind of decorate something different, saw all this fun stuff on Pinterest, and a friend of mine, her old roommate did balloons. She mentioned it one time, so I was like, okay, well, I'm going to reach out to her. Make a long story short, she did balloons at my wedding. I followed her career and thought, this is so cool. So at this point last year, like I just got married. I come off the high of a wedding and, you know, married the man of my dreams and all of this. But at the same time, it was like, you know, when you're going to work every day and you're not happy, I mean, it's, it's not, um, it's not great. So I thought, you know, there's really no one in Fort Worth doing these balloons. There's people in Dallas, there's people in Houston, but not in Fort Worth. So I'm going to go for this. And so I kind of knew being at a low point that it was probably going to be make things worse before it got better. Because, you know, there's a lot of stress involved in kind of even starting a side hustle. Um, I'm working at this time still full time, but I um, just went ahead and went for it. I made the Instagram account. I'd never, I did one balloon thing for my husband's birthday earlier that summer, but I didn't know what I was really doing. I just knew I could do it. I was Mm -hmm. like, you know, I'll figure this out. So I order these balloons and I start just playing around and learning and practicing. Then I get a job where I basically just charge them cost because just let me do anything. It was a 50th birthday in the stockyard. So I acted like that was just the most like crazy thing I've ever done. I mean, it seemed so much work and all of this. And I look back, I'm like, I do like 10 of those a day now. But at the time it was like, oh my gosh, this is huge. But anyway, so I slowly started, you know, gaining more self-esteem again and, you know, feeling better. And then the business just kept growing. Um, And then COVID happened. (laughs) No, because 2019 is when you really started Mm -hmm. this career. Okay. And we're in 2020. So you're about a year or so into your business now. Yeah. So I started in like August. I made the account and September was my first like job that I did. So by Christmas, I had some really fun things I did. January was good. February was really good. And so I was like, you know what? Like, I see like this becoming something I could do full time. And then COVID happened, of course. Oh, and gosh. I just sat in my house for like two weeks. Um, I worked from home as an attorney. So I was like, just so down. Cause I was like, man, I saw this way out of this mm-hmm. career I did not love. And I found something I really enjoyed. And then now who knows what's going to happen because right. all of my jobs were canceled. And at the time I was doing bigger like birthdays and bigger sure. events. So all of those were canceled um, and I hadn't really done smaller things. So I was like, you know, like what, what am I going to do? I guess this is the end. Um, and then someone contacted me about delivering balloons to um, their grandmother uh, on her doorstep for her 90th birthday. I was like, I can do that. Right. And so then drive-by parties started happening. Exactly. I can do that. That's outdoors, add some fun. And so, you know, these things just kept like going and going. And I did Kennedy's birthday, which was mm-hmm. amazing. She had so many people driving by and oh. I even drove by a few days later and they were still, still up. There. And mm-hmm. I was like, oh, this is so great. And so anyway, it kind of just snowballed from there and business picked up even more. So I was really, really blessed for that opportunity when a lot of people's businesses did really suffer. Mine kind of took a new path. It did. You know, and um, Paul and I have been talking about this since, because the podcast started last January. We were about to have a year um, birthday, thank goodness. But, you know, we were thinking, okay, you know, we're going to keep going. We're not going to not release a podcast every Tuesday. So I started watching people that started their business like yourself and other people watching what was going on. And and we're all thinking the same thing. What are we going to do? How are we going to redefine our business? And I watched your, I mean, I've just, I did see you. I saw where you went from, you know, we slowed down. And then when like the drive-bys, the birthday parties, the events, the because we all want to feel better and your business makes everyone so happy. I mean, it's amazing. You did the Alpha Chi Omega girls. Uh, my sorority, Kennedy sorority at TCU, 
I mean, those girls are just so happy, you know? So I can imagine going from a career that is, you're brilliant. I mean, you're, you've got it, but it's just not where you want to be. So reinventing yourself, but we've heard that so many times when people say, yeah, I started my business, then COVID happened. And it, congratulations for staying in there because you're busy. Right? Thank you so much. And you've been such a support. I oh, of course I so am. Much. Are you kidding me? I love you. Well, um, so I'm going to go back and I'm going to, I, I, I worked, this is what I did when I graduated TC. I was a high school teacher at 21. Okay. So teaching seniors probably about three years younger than I. Okay. All right. So home economics. Um, I didn't like it. I wasn't cut out to be a teacher and all of those teachers out there now, bless you. God bless you because that's not what I'm cut out to do. So I remember Coach Kazmarski, he, uh, ta- he was a coaching football and he said to me because he knew I, um, he's like a father figure. He knew in my eyes, I wasn't into teaching. And he said to me, but I couldn't find a way out. I just couldn't find a way out. And he said to me, the day that I wake up and I say, oh, no, I don't want to work. I just don't want to go to work. I don't want to go to work anymore. I don't want to do this. Is the day that you need to stop. Mm. I enrolled in culinary school on the East Coast that summer. And I said, I'm not doing it anymore. And again, everyone has their career path. They have their passion. And that was certainly not mine. And again, teaching is a special passion, just like the law is a special passion. You know, I mean, it's it's amazing how many people, and I think about you, you're young. I have a friend that's my age, 55, and she's an attorney and has been a ter- an attorney her entire career. And she wants to be a Pilates instructor, you know, and she's like, okay, do the math, you know, and so there's that, right? Mm-hmm. But you have the support. I mean, you had the support starting a new business. You had your husband at the time. Were y'all married when you started? Yes, we had got married last April, and uh-huh. I decided to start in August. And funny enough, when he met me, I was a few months away from graduating law school. And he told me then, which at the time meant nothing to me, really, mm-hmm. um, I don't know why you want to be a lawyer. Like wow. He saw something in me then, even barely knowing me. Like, I don't know that this is for you. Um, But, you know, it just went back to not knowing if Mm -hmm. I could go back and do it all over. Who knows? But it definitely wouldn't have been Mm -hmm. law school. Like, I appreciate it because I grew and I met lifelong friends and I felt like it was somewhere I belonged. Mm -hmm. Um, But the career itself, just that wasn't it. So it's funny he saw that well before I did. Mm -hmm. And you, I'm sure you've lost into into a new person. It really is funny. I was talking to my best friend um, over text a few days ago saying, man, if you, because I think I posted something on my personal account saying like, if you knew me a year ago, I don't know that you know me type thing. Um, Mm -hmm. And I think that that's been huge because when you have, you know, a lower self-esteem and you're not happy, Mm -hmm. you settle for things, you settle for people and you're not who you you should be when you're unhappy. Exactly. Um, You settle relationship wise, you mm -hmm. settle for everything. When I graduated TCU and did go into teaching and I knew, so I, like yourself, I equated law and being a doctor with being wealthy or that, and not to say they're not. So I took the LSAT. Mm, I didn't know that. Are you kidding me? I took, I can't remember, a prep course and drove to Dallas and took the prep course, you know, for several weeks, took the LSAT, did okay. But you know what? I just went, this is the worst but I mean, me, I'm a chef. I mean, <laughs> I'm in the, I'm in that brain world, you know, mm-hmm. a creative world. And I was trying to force a round peg and a square hole because I thought that meant success. Mm-hmm. And oh my gosh, I was going to be well thought of. And I think there was some self-esteem issues now that I'm sitting here talking to you about it. Yeah. Cause you, it's one of those, like now I tell people I'm an attorney for a whole different reason mm-hmm. than I told them before. Right. Before when I told people it was... If it, I need to be proud of myself. Like you need, like I need to feel better about myself. Sure. Now I just say it because it's like, I'm professional. Mm -hmm. I'm smart. I've got it together. Not so much that it doesn't matter. Being an attorney has nothing to do with being in the balloon business, but it just, I think, I hope it gives people confidence in me. Like I'm not just a fly by night, random person. Like I'm here for 
the long haul. I'm not going to flake on you. And <laughs> I was reading um, in Voyager mag- magazine, which I, I know you were featured and I was just featured this week. And I, it, it said, it said um, something about your, or your in, in your bio is a side hustle b- balloon artist. I'm going to call you balloon master, but, but your side hustle. So I can imagine. So when you were starting, were you still practicing law? I did. So wow. I did not quit my job until April of this year. Um, it finally got to this a point year. where I could put everything into the business. And that was, it's still stressful um, because, you know, you're working for yourself and Mm -hmm. there's so many unknowns and, um, you know, I'm still paying bills and doing everything that people have to do. So um, it's been nice to have a successful business where I can do that and make a profit, but then also, you know, hire some people and have, give other people opportunities and, Mm -hmm. um, but anyway, yeah. Oh, it's it's amazing. It is absolutely amazing. Well, I'm so proud of you. I mean, I mean, just where you come. And when I met you, when you came to my home, we've met before. But when you came in April, you would just quit your job. Okay, pretty much. Yeah, that is crazy. Well, mm-hmm. I'm proud of you. And all of you out there listening, you can do it. You can definitely do it. You it can. takes a plan, though. You've definitely. Got, yeah, I had a plan. Like I knew, maybe not as well formed as it should have been, but I knew myself well enough to know making balloons, being creative and making things with my hands, I can do. Um, there was a point where I thought, oh no, can I do this? Like, <laughs> I um, can do it. but you know, just practice, 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 practice and practice. learn and research. And that's sure. kind of what I did. And, um, it, I think the biggest thing was just making the leap. Right. Because there was a point where I was very teeter tottery on even doing it. Like I wanted to, but I was scared. So I made the Instagram account, messaged Almost everyone I knew. Then said, you're in. Will you please follow my account? I'm doing this, da da da. And then it was kind of like there's accountability there because mm-hmm. then if I quit, it, you know, oh, yeah. if the point where you have low self esteem and you care what everyone thinks <laughs> of you, I knew I wouldn't turn back at that point. Exactly, exactly. So, so let's back up here. So when you started this business, so you had you had a balloon artist do your wedding. Yes. Okay. So that was your inspiration. Now I read in your bio, you are very crafty. You love woodworking, interior design. So you like all of the left brain things. Okay. So which makes sense. Which bring this. So how do you come up? I mean, hundreds of different balloonscapes. How do you come up with this? Seriously. So I think some of it, I have to credit Pinterest and Instagram. Um, But a lot of it, I was just blessed. And I'm sure you are too, if you are that left brain. I I see things before they're done. Yes. So it's like, I can see it in my head. Last night, I was talking to someone about a Christmas setup and I said, hold on, it's not coming to me. Let me think about it for a little bit. And it took me a minute to kind of play through it in my head and look at the invitation. I don't know, but I can see it. So a lot of it is just, I kind of dream it up and a lot of times it doesn't work out when it comes down to making it, but right. Um, I mean, colors and I mean, so where we are with ordering, are you, have you had, have you had some issues with ordering and not get because of COVID? Yes. Oh my goodness. It's so funny that there's like a balloon sh- or there was, it's getting better, but I don't know now that COVID's getting worse, but um, uh. there was a balloon shortage. So <laughs> when I started um, doing this full time, I created a list of colors that I keep in stock because it's almost impossible to do things quickly and, you know, on a quick turnaround if I don't have the inventory. So right now I have an unbelievable amount of inventory, but I have set colors that are popular, about 60 of them. And it was getting so hard to keep them in stock. And it still is. There's certain ones that I can't get, which is just absurd, but um, the supply chain and then everyone balloons became so popular because of this new way of doing them. Mm -hmm. I think everyone thinks if you haven't, seen some of my work or other artist work it's like a helium balloon or you know something like a little column right nothing that you know is that impressive but I mean there's people out there too that just blow me away wow Um, so so there's so there is I I need to go to Pinterest and check this out but there's different I mean there's several people in the industry that do what you do and you all share your ideas on Pinterest and Instagram yeah I feel like I've made friends with people um on Instagram and they do what I do in California or they do what I do in Cleveland or Charlotte, um, North Carolina and there's, or South Carolina. Oh my goodness. I'm smarter than this, but whatever, forget it. (laughs) (laughs) That's Uh, right. (laughs) I forget this Carolinas, but anyway, um, friends everywhere and they're so helpful and we'll, you know, people ask me questions sometimes and I'm happy to 
to help to an extent and, you know, help them out. And right. I feel like there's a good community of people because we're all creative and we love what we do and we're here to help each other. So that's, that's been right. really encouraging. As a lawyer, we have some pages where, you know, women could ask questions. There's like a women's attorney page um, that I was in and people are helpful and kind and shared forms and different uh, emotions that they needed. But I just feel like in this industry, people are so much kinder. And I think it's because we are bringing joy to people. Mm -hmm. It's not a negative job. Um, the jobs I had as a lawyer were fairly negative. It's people fighting over something, oh, suing right. each suing. other, or they're unhappy because something bad happened. I was in employment law for a little bit. It's like, you know, they weren't being paid and felt good to help them. But at the same time, the every day was the negative. Oh, gosh. Um, you know, I didn't think about that. Mm -hmm. That's true. I have friends that, um, one of my best friends is a family law attorney. And oh, gosh. She just says she fights over blankets and dishes and, uh, you know. Children and dogs. Children and, and, uh, and my best friend, she's an attorney for CPS in Denton County. And oh, that's even, no. yeah. Mm -mm. So I'm just like, mm -mm. God bless them for doing that. Right. But it wasn't for me. Right. Like I bring all that home with me. I know they do too. So of course you do. I mean, that's the thing if bringing it home, you know, and you have to stop and it's difficult to leave it at home. You know, people say, oh, it's a nine to five. No, mm -hmm. it's not a nine to five. <laughs> no. Your brain doesn't stop working at five o'clock in the afternoon. Okay. So you... Start out. Okay. Then I saw you got a van. I did. Oh my gosh. I thinking, I'm watching you grow. When you, when I did Kennedy's birthday, I was thinking back when you're mentioning it and I had a Ford Explorer. Mm -hmm. I don't know how I did the jobs I did. How I did would, you do it? I would cram all that stuff in, go one place, come back, cram it in, blow up some things on site. I managed. Um, but luckily I was able to buy a nice big transit van. So I have a ton of room now and oh, it's gosh. made life so much easier. Oh. So if you're in Fort Worth and you see a colorful van with balloons all over it, it's me. That's Carly. <laughs> That's the balloon master right yeah. there. So you, you bought the van and I have to tell you, so uh, Carly, I grew up scared of balloons because oh, they funny. would always pop. pop. Yeah. I hear a lot of people say that. Or my brother would get a pen and pop it. So I have this, even when you were doing it at my house, I was like, oh, don't pop. And we went to my sister's, I gave my sister a 50th. So I had the balloons and of course two pop while I'm driving. And I'm like, I have this OC. I mean, I have this PTSD from these balloons, but I was watching your video last night. You have a YouTube video on your website, oh, which yes. your website's fabulous. Okay. So I was laughing because I'm like, were you ever scared of balloons? No. I don't think I There's was. There's no way she's scared. No. And I, my husband's very jumpy, like yeah. unbelievably jumpy, and I'm not at all. So it fit well for me because you do have them pop here you and there. You do? Um, and it's funny. Uh, Katie uh, works for me and what we usually tell people is don't be scared of them because people will pick them up and they're holding them like they're glass or yes. something. And I'm like- you know, it's very unlikely that from just putting them in your car or moving them around, they're going to pop. And of course, every time Katie tells someone that one happens to pop, she's like, every time I say it, what pops? But for the most part, I mean, I go days sometimes with none of them popping. Um, You're the balloon master, girl. <laughs> Come on now. Okay, so when I was watching, so go to her 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 website and your website is stellar-creations.com. And you have this YouTube, it's seven and a half minutes. I want to know how many times you had to take those, that I mean, did you have to do multiple days? Oh my goodness. No, we did it in <laughs> you did it. about an hour. And I kind of was running late. I had jobs that day and I hired a videographer to do it yes. and edit it because um, I wanted to show people at the time I was selling DIY kits, which yes. I'm going to try to get back into, but it's just oh, going to so much at a time. But yes. um, I wanted a video to kind of show people. And so if you're, you know, have balloons and you're struggling yeah. or something, you know, look at the video on my website, but came into it and was like, I mean, I know how to do this, but I've never sat and explained it to someone or, so we just went with it and I was really pleased. I watched it without cringing. So, you know, when you hear yourself. Oh yes, of course. Um, oh, of course. Yeah. You know. <laughs> yeah. But you have on there, of course, I'm like talking about blowing up. Do you just, so you have the, 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 um, the two, you had an electric one and a pump. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I, I just honestly was watching going, I just don't see myself doing this. Thank goodness. I don't have to do it myself because I can get Carly to do this for me. But I mean, it's, it's great. I mean, that is so wonderful because you had a do-it-yourself kit at one time. So that's wonderful. I started that during COVID because, you know, there were people 
that wouldn't even want to get out of their house or do anything so I could send it to them wherever they are and they could put it together. And there was zero contact at that point. Isn't so that great? yeah, it's really fun. So you've grown so much, you have your van. Now you're down on Blue Bonnet Circle and you have a storefront. Yeah. I mean, that is so great. It's so I know this because you when you first got the space. The Alpha Omegas did their photo shoot there, and I've seen you done several there. But tell us about your party shop. So I needed more space to work because the balloons, when we do jobs, they're not there long, but I need space to store them while I'm working. Right. Um, and, you know, you need a good bit of space. So In your house? Yeah, oh I was God. doing it in my house first, and then I had a small space, very, very, very small space for a little bit. At least it was out of my house because my husband's been working at home. So, mm-hmm. um and then went back to our house and we converted our garage into my workspace. And I thought, oh, I can save money and work out of here for a while. But luckily enough, grew way too much, needed out of the garage, couldn't even store all the balloons, much less work. Oh. Um, so anyway, got the storefront and I thought, okay, like I've not done retail, but if people are coming in to pick up balloons or, you know, need some really nice party supplies on the fly, we can have the shop. Might as well. We have the space. So we carry a lot of really cute brands and I kind of cater towards a lot of the work we do is for kids, um, but we also do a lot of weddings, bridal showers, lots of baby showers. So we have everything kind of to fit those parties that we do a lot of, but we've got fun Christmas stuff in the store now and um, we're Plate, op- plates and cups and yes, all the just party decor and we're adding to it every day. We have some fun wrapping paper and pinatas and just anything I can find that's unique and fits oh, in our party um, world. So. Do you get to go to uh, markets? I'm going to go to market. <gasps> I know. I'm so, so excited. excited. Yes. Oh my gosh, how fun. I got the email a few weeks ago that I was like approved to go or whatnot. Um, so I was like, oh, we've got to go. We've got to go check everything out. That's in Dallas, right? Mm-hmm. So is it like the gift market? or is So it- there's one in January. I'm new to it, mm-hmm. but I got an email saying in January there's a market. So I was like, I want to go check everything out and get the newest fun stuff. And How fun. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's like I shopping. Love all, yes, Are I love all that stuff. Oh, I was just, you know, the word budget would not be in, oh, no. So how many people do you have working for you and what type of what capacity are they working? So I've had Katie working for me and she is a godsend. She started a couple months ago or more than that, four or five months ago. And she does a lot of my emailing, invoicing. She helps with balloons. Um, She's also a wedding planner. She has other party gigs she does too. So she's a jack of all trades. And so she's She's my like right hand. And then I have um, Nikki who helps with balloons as well. And I call her a balloon stylist. So I'm training her um, to learn everything I've taught myself over the last year. Um, And then I have some people who are working in the shop to open the shop and just have it open so that people can come in and get their pickup orders. Because what we ran into was we'd be out delivering or installing or doing something, but then people wanted to pick up and it's like, that was another reason I needed that store more than even mm-hmm. just um, the workspace. I wanted somewhere people could come in and get their items and have someone running it. So we didn't have to coordinate everything because mm-hmm. it would be like, oh my gosh, we got to get back to the store now or get back for someone to pick up. And so right. I've got a few people running the shop and I'm looking for more balloon stylists. So if anyone is looking for a part-time job right now where they learn balloons and- wow. I mean, it's definitely fun. Nikki said when she started, like, this doesn't feel like work. It's fun. I look forward to it. So Mm -hmm. that made me feel good. And you like each other. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's great. So when you thought about doing retail, did that scare you at all? It did. Because, I mean, you figure just, I have a small selection right now. I'm growing it because I didn't want to invest, you know, a ton if I didn't know how it was going to do. So um, having that inventory is a little scary. And there was a ton of work into getting it all online because I want people to be able to pay online and pick up curbside or whatever they were comfortable with. And so I've actually had some good success with people buying online and picking up in store. Um, Everyone's so digital and loves, I love to online shop almost more than in person sometimes. So um, that's been good. And um, I'm looking to add more and more products and shopping for Valentine's and Easter and all the fun holidays and hopefully COVID will be better and we don't have to worry about it come hopefully Easter this year or next year. (laughs) Won't that be great? I mean, I just, I, you know, we've talked about this so many times before. Just, I really do think we all didn't realize what we had. 
Mm-hmm. I mean, I just didn't realize what we had. And I realized I had too much too. You know what I mean? I just can make do, but I'm ready to go out and have parties. And yes, I'm looking forward to that for just my personal life oh, and for right? my business. <laughs> so I'm like, please, everyone celebrate big and call us because we will make it over the top. Absolutely. Well, oh my gosh, I'll just... I, I'm ready for it to be over. Let's go. Get it over with. Okay, so this is a really stupid question, but go ahead and ask it. Well, so there's, okay, so if I blow up a balloon, that's my air, or a helium balloon, mm-hmm. do you do, why would you need helium, like for what you did across my balcony? Mm-hmm. That wasn't helium, nope, was it? all air. So I try to use as little helium as possible. Um, and just, why is that? It's expensive. Okay. And, um, you know, the supply, there's... There's conflicting reports on the helium, but I mean, I still do the big jumbo balloons. They're like three feet wide um, and I can put, you know, happy birthday, Tiffany, anything you want on them. And I feel like just having this giant balloon delivered to you, young and old, love it. I delivered one on, I guess that was Monday and it was her 60th birthday, delivered it to her workplace and she's in her, you know, office. And next thing she knows, she turns around, there's this giant balloon and just listening to her, you know, even at 60 years old, giggle and laugh and, oh my goodness, like never had really hard, any experiences like that as a lawyer. And I get those almost every day. I've been doing elf on a shelf. So I put the little elf on a shelf in the balloon Ah. and then deliver it. So he's in quarantine, maybe, or just in the balloon for fun. And um, I pulled forward a little in my Jeep one day and um, waited to watch the kids' reaction when they came out. And that just made my whole day because I could hear their little squeals and laughs um, in my Jeep. And that's the stuff that, you know, keeps me going. I love doing Gosh, it, but so wonderful. some days it still gets tedious oh, and we're sure. busy and it's stressful and, you know, right. we're running here and there, but then seeing people happy and their celebrations, it's really fun. I'm sure. I'm sure. So when you found your space, was, was it difficult to find a space or is there... It was. I was didn't it? realize it's not like buying a house. You know, you get on MLS, you look at all the homes and you know where they're at. Um, so I had a fabulous broker, Dana Quisenberry, and she um, had a listing near my home and I had contacted her to look at it. Um, cause she was the broker for that, that um, development, but it was just too big out of my price range. And so she went out looking and talking and um, contacted brokers she knew, and she found me the spot on Blue Bonnet Circle. And that was the only way I'd know about it unless I drove by and saw the for lease signs. Mm-hmm. So it really was a great location. We get a lot of traffic there. It's by TCU. TCU. It's right by, you know, there's a school, a couple schools around there and homes everywhere. So really convenient and easy for people to get to. So I was really, really happy to find it. Just a no-brainer, right? Mm -hmm. And you do rentals, right? Did I see that? Yeah, so we have some fun, unique rentals. I mean, we have things geared towards balloons. Like I have a big gold hoop and a big gold hexagon that we can add balloons to, or you can rent it and add florals or greenery or anything else you might like. Um, We have... And numbers, like kids' oh, numbers. yes. Yeah. So I used to make all of those out, the big five-foot numbers I made by hand, cut it all out, out of foam board. And those take oh anywhere, depending on the number, because some have curves and that takes longer, but anywhere from an hour to two hours to make just the frame of it. And then adding all the balloons, easily another hour to add all those tiny balloons to it. So it was one of the things like, we just don't have time to do these and they're so popular. So... I had someone make them out of wood. So now we can fill them and then pick them back up. So we don't have to keep making that frame over and over and over. It's like nightmares I have of making them. Oh my gosh. I was thinking about how you had a uh, University of Texas Longhorn and I was like, how did she do that? Oh my gosh. Did you leave it with them? Was that, they was got that, to keep that one. So that I'll one. still do custom ones. You'll see right now I have some gingerbread men that I made. For, you did? Yes. The little so gingerbread cute. boy and girl. They're adorable. And I'll be keeping those to refill because they're. I I was up oh, until gosh. about midnight on one of them and woke up at 5 a.m. to complete the other one. And you they made take these? forever. Yes. And I just freehanded the little gingerbread man. And, no, man. Uh, so I'll make them custom in a you know, special occasion, but, um, they're not, they're not that fun to make. <laughs> okay. We're in December now. So if you go back on her feed <laughs> on Instagram and I did message you, there's these two gingerbread, one, a man and a, one, a, a guy and a girl, and they are adorable. She stuffed them with these brown balloons and they're just, they look like, they're almost like pastry. I mean, they're just 
They're so real. They're real sweet. I love them. Gingerbread people are like my favorite. Like when I was a kid, everything that we would buy for Christmas decorations was gingerbread girls and boys and all that. But, um, but yeah, they're still in the shop. They're three weeks old and the little balloons are, they'll start to like deflate and they're not looking at their prime right now, but they're still cute and they're in the shop. So they I'll, need a little Botox. They do. They need a lot <laughs> then of they it. pop. So, but you, you know, you told me when, when you installed Kennedy's, you said they'll last, you know, you know, four or five days. Well, they were up there a week. I had to finally, Just, I was scared. To do. <laughs> oh my gosh. I wish you would have told me I would oh have come gosh. and taken them down I'm for not, you. And I was pulling and Greg was helping me and I pulled and I'm like, Oh, don't pop it. Don't pop it. Oh my gosh. And you see, you need an uninstall. Fee we too. do. And we do that. If you oh, want us to Greg, um, we can do it um, <laughs> because I mean, for me, it's a stress relief when I get to pop all of them because I just get the scissors out and you Mm-mm. can just attack them. But when you have a phobia, phobia. about them popping and the jumpiness some people have towards them. What a them, weirdo I am. <laughs> no, there's, there's <laughs> quite a few people that tell me that. They're like, I love the way they look. I just don't want to touch them or I do am. anything with them. <laughs> I imagined it popping on the way to San Antonio oh, in my traffic. Goodness. You can't see how the car is hysterical. <laughs> okay. So talk to me about how... Um, there's a two-part question here. So do social media influencers or influencers help your business and how? So really in Fort Worth, I think that for all businesses, word of mouth is huge. Fort Worth is so um, tight knit and everyone looks to each other for recommendations. So I think that anyone that's sharing and, you know, putting my name out there is helpful, especially people with a following that follow them for the exact reason they would follow you so that they can learn about new brands, learn about new things and, you know, cooking and all the things right. they're looking at your account for. Um, and then they see, oh, fun. And I'm having a party or, you know, mm-hmm. it's so helpful. Word of mouth is huge. And I appreciate everyone who shares. And I tell them a lot of times, you, I appreciate this more than you know. And I right. mean it. Right. Because I'm right. like, that's free advertising for me. I don't have to pay for. So can, can you believe where marketing and advertising has gone in this world? I mean, it's, and I mean, I, where I, where I started in my career, I just, and I worked in, I mean, for a magazine group and just how it's changed, you know, Mm -hmm. you're not really buying print advertising. I mean, it's, it's all social media now. Isn't that something? It is something. And funny enough, my UTA undergrad was advertising. Really? But there's the only reason I did it is I decided, which should have been clue number one, that (laughs) I shouldn't go to law school probably is my major was political science. Like most people who want to go to law school. Mm -hmm. And I made it to the fall of my junior year and I was like, I can't do this. Mm -mm. (laughs) So I looked at all the degrees and I was like, what can I switch at the fall of my junior year and still graduate in four years? Really? So I said, okay, with the class offerings and what I can cram in in a semester and May semester and summer school, I can finish in four years with advertising. So I have an advertising undergrad degree, but um, so funny enough, but it, advertising, it was more marketing, but sure. I mean, this was pre Instagram. I graduated in 2010. So pre Instagram, Facebook was a thing, but mm-hmm. I don't think ads were a thing then. No. So that was never anything I learned about, um, which I'm sure there's courses now that they're required to take oh, all on it's advertising crazy. on social media. It's so. Crazy. Uh, so you started out political science, mm-hmm. Kennedy's political science, and she's a senior now. And everyone's first question, are you going to law school? You know, and she was she she's listening to this today, and she, <laughs> that'll that'll seal the deal. But just no, I I don't. She loves to learn, but just that's that's interesting. I really want all these kids to listen because you know you do get pigeonholed, and a lot of kids get scholarships. And I got a scholarship, and my degree had to follow a certain plan, and it worked out for me. But. I would have gone into broadcasting 1,000% if I didn't go into food. So, you know, you kind of pigeonhole a little mm-hmm. bit, but I'll be fine. But So you collaborate. Um, I did the Prippy event with yes, Amy Lively. I and the, your, your masquerade balloons were so beautiful, so fabulous. Again, on her Instagram, on Instagram, different things you can do. But collaborating with different people that provide a service like you has probably been incredible, right? Well, even going back to Prippy with Amy, she said I did her like re-grand opening when they moved locations. And she told me the next day that people came in and said, oh, I saw the balloons. And that makes me so happy because um, I did balloons around stock show time this year before COVID. Mm -hmm. And it was for Tucker Brown and they had a storefront. And she said the same thing. She said people saw balloons and they, oh, something's going on. 
So yeah. um, Amy with Prippy had me come back for um, Black Friday and I decorated for Christmas because she said it draws attention. Mm-hmm. Um, and I love that because I'm like, you know, yes, it's cute. It's fun. It's an Instagram shot. It's everything that, you know, you want on your feed, but at the same time, it's actually helping your business. Um, if more people are coming in and purchasing. Right. From you. I mean, and just driving along Camp Bowie where Amy's shop is that, that beautiful, I mean, it was purple and orange, right? I think the masquerade yeah. colors and everything. And I put a boomerang on my feed. People were messaging going, where, where is, where is that? What is that? I mean, no, it what's is, going on? You know, it's just amazing. It's just, I mean, it is like wildfire. I mean, seriously, the, the way we are working our world today is unbelievable. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So do you do anything with YouTube other than what you did with your video? No? I posted my video on YouTube basically just, you know, right. to help people out. Because, you know, even when I started, I was looking at YouTube videos. How do you do these balloons? How do you make this? So um, I, I need to expand. What mm-hmm. I'm hoping to do is to hire some people to help with my social media because oh. I'm still doing <laughs> all of it. And I mean, it, it seems probably crazy to people who post just personally, but takes a lot of thought and effort and planning. And it's, I mean, I'm okay at it, but I'm not an expert. So I'd love to have someone help me with TikTok as well, because I'm a little outside of that uh, demographic for TikTok. But I've seen all these balloon people blow up on there. Um, No pun intended. Uh, (laughs) Literally. (laughs) um, Yeah. So, I mean, because you post these cool videos showing all these balloon things you do. And Mm -hmm. I mean, if you're crafty and you've tried to make much of anything, I think you can appreciate the time and effort that goes into it. So people have really responded to people posting their balloon accounts and things they do. So hopefully I can get into more of, you know, videos on YouTube and tutorials and Mm -hmm. helping people make things on their own and if you're not in Fort Worth and you see something I do, maybe you want to watch a video and try it yourself. I'm kind of that person, you know, and not everyone is. You said, I'm not doing it. But for me, you know, that's kind of my bread and butter. I want to make things. And, um, you know, I, I'm just going to go backwards and kind of shift, but I saw years ago in 2012, a big ruler uh, made of wood and you would mark your kids heights on it. Sure. And people made them just with Sharpie and stencil. And I thought, well, that's really cool. So I made one for a friend. And when I made it for her and her soon to be baby, um, all these people said, I want one, I want one, I want one. And I was like, hmm, I need to find a better way to do this more professional. I'm going to charge someone for something on Sharpie on stained wood. So I bought a like router and I got stencils and I learned and I did like the lines. I engraved them in the wood and then I did the numbers and I could do their name. And um, so I had a little side hustle. Another side hustle. Doing these growth charts. And it really, it took off and did better than my balloons did starting off. Because really? it was one of those things, everyone has kids or grandkids. And I love seeing heights, sure, you know, on the right. on the um, frames of doors. I think mm-hmm. it's sweet. But this is something you can take with you. And so anyway, I started doing that. And then I went to law school. And so right. it's funny because, I mean, I wasn't going to not go to law school over that side gig. But... I quit because I just didn't have time to keep doing it. Um, But, you know, I see things. I'm like, I can do that. So Mm -hmm. I think it'd be fun to have a YouTube video or channel and do things of that nature as well. But I need some help. (laughs) You know, and it is. It's true. You know, you need help. And and my husband, he retired recently, sold his company last year. And he he has always given me the best advice because I, I and I don't know what it is about my personality or it was, but. I thought I had to do everything. I had to do the mm-hmm. bookkeeping. I had to do, you know, at the time, you know, I, you know, I had to everything I had to do. And that's not true because that's not my, what I should do. Stay in your lane. And he said, always hire people smarter than yourself. And it's true. It's absolutely true. People, you know, that's, that belongs in your business, opening and closes store, a stylist, you know, I mean, as someone to deliver, they're there. Everyone has a lane. And I always tell that. And I back to your story of, you know, that wasn't the lane you were supposed to be driving in, mm-hmm. but it's made you who you are today, you know? So, yeah, I know. So <laughs> tell me about the future. What, where do you see this going other than, I mean, you're just taking, do you see multiple locations? And look at <laughs> so your, I have, <laughs> your face is like, I just need help blowing up my balloons. Uh, yeah, I do <laughs> need help. And it's funny, Katie, I'll tell her something crazy all the time. She's like, oh, so are we a full-fledged, uh, you know, events company now? And I was like, we might be. And she's like, let's just, at one point she was like, let's get out of the garage first. Like it was always like, let's take a step at a time. But I do have some big plans and I'm hoping I've had this plan mm, 
pretty quickly into the business, but it's one of the things like, I can't just, you know, you've got to grow and you got to learn and I'm experimenting with what I want to do in the big scheme of things. I know I'm being vague, but, Mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah, I've got plans for it. Um, multiple locations is definitely within that, you know, idea I have. Um, but really right now, just trying to get my name out there more in Fort Worth and DFW Mm -hmm. and, um, hire more people to help because one issue, and I just, you know, touch on is stay in your lane. Oh my gosh. So true. Like Mm -hmm. I'm, I've been doing everything since day one because I didn't have a choice at that point, you know, Of course. but now it's like, okay, I've got enough revenue. I can start hiring people to do the things that I am not the best at. Um, and so I think that like knowing when to make that step is so tough because even just hiring Katie, she fell into my lap and it was one of those, like, I could not hire her at the time. Um, I didn't, fully need her at the moment, but then oh, very quickly after I hired her, I needed her because I grew. Cause it's like right. once I had someone to start responding to these emails and sending these invoices, it freed up time for me to do other things, which grew the business. So right. it's like, you know, it's a balancing act. Like when do I make the move to hire someone to help in this part right. of my business? But then again, you know, like not waiting too long until you're underwater. Oh, um, right. You're drowning. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's like, oh, I struggle with that a lot. And, right. You know, I'm okay delegating things, but I'm sure you, you know, said you're the same way. It's hard when you're kind of not a control freak, but it's like, you know, I can do it. I want to do it. Mm-hmm. I've, I've got my hand on everything, but right. just kind of got to give up some of that control. And Yeah. And, you know, I've learned that, um, that productivity if I really just let everybody do their job and, and I, um, we had a staff meeting last weekend and last week and, and I, it's, it's the same thing. I can't let go of some things, but I need to let go and I'm learning to let go. And I mean, people that work for me are half my age and I don't know what I'm doing as far as social media, but I'm learning, but it's making mistakes too. And, you know, learning from your mistakes and, admitting your mistakes, of course, (laughs) you know, and moving forward. So, but productivity is so much better. So, well, I am so proud of you. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate that. Proud proud to know you and your story. And I'm, I'm hoping people hear this and know your story. And I cannot wait to see where this goes. Now, listen, you said to me, and I'm so excited for all you because you're going to use a code. You're going to put a code in today, which this will air next week, but um, Tiffany 20, to all of my listeners and followers, a 20% discount, right? Yeah. So I have everything in the party shop, cards, plates, napkins, all of that. And then um, I've added our most popular items where you can customize them online. So yes. garlands, pick your colors, mm. pick the length, um, and then add it to your cart, pay for it, tell us the date you need it, and then we'll respond with you know, a delivery option if you choose that. Um, so you can actually order these creations and make them custom as well through the website. And that's so exciting. Take this opportunity to get 20% off. Well, and I appreciate it because this is our gift to listeners and followers in our community. And I can't pre- tell you how much I appreciate you and so proud of you for Thank moving you. on. Oh my goodness. Yes. So much happier. Yes, I can tell. So Carly, your Instagram is at Stellar Balloons with an A. Stellar. Mm-hmm. Her last name is Mar Stellar. Right. Yeah, yeah, that's where the name came from. That's but. right. I know. I figured that out a long time ago. But um it took my own mother like I think a couple months before she kidding. put it together. Oh, I'm wait. like mother. <laughs> oh my gosh. How did you not see that? How could you not see that? And your website is www.stellar. Uh, no dash creations.com and you're on blue bonic circle and you're going to have a lot of people come see you. Gosh, and I hope so. I know. And you know what? We're going to get through this COVID. I'm so happy with your business. It's just taken off so well. And it's going to be a great new year for sure. Gosh, I hope so. 2021. And everyone, yes. thank you so much for listening and follow me along at Tiffany C. Blackman on Instagram and go over to YouTube, rate and review this. Tell us what you want to hear and please rate and review because we need to move up in that Apple world, the podcast world. And everyone, happy, happy day. Stay healthy and keep being fabulous.